I've personally still been able to find some success with them, even though the change, uh, some changes have come through, and I'll talk about those once we get in game. But mm -hmm. overall, he is a weaker champion in certain ways. But the important part is his core DPS zoning ability is still there, and that is really what's yeah. important with Azir. Yeah, I mean, Faker has found some success with him. He played yeah. uh, played two games of the Azir in the 2-0 win over uh, KT Rolster just the other day. So, I mean, but it's Faker being Faker, of course. to be fair. Lockins, though, coming in. Yeah, Lockins for Johnson Heights. We're going to be seeing the Kindred for the Jungle. Looks like a Chundle up top lane. Yeah, definitely uh, would favor the Trundle up top. Would be good into this Echo that is likely going to be locked in here. Uh, Echo is someone else has also been very strong, and even though he did have some changes in this patch, similarly to the Azir, um, he had some that... Echo, however, had some that uh, focused on one of his particular builds. It focused on the tank Echo build and tried to take that out of style, really. He's trying to force him more into that AP Assassin build. I don't know... How well tank echo works on this current patch but it will be locked in and that will likely be going top i wouldn't be surprised to see more of an ap build uh, ap focused build here from this echo maybe a rod of ages maybe an abyssal scepter something like that seems like it would be pretty common right now because the effectiveness that you get out of each point of ap just went up basically and you're kind of punished for not building it which, well, that was the idea to prevent you from building no AP on Echo. So we'll likely see an adjustment here. Yeah, Graves locked in here for only secrets and most likely the jungle here. He is a, a Graves main, so... Okay, perfect. It would be pretty easy to lock in for him here. Hover over a Sivir. So I think... Ooh, Tarek would be an interesting pick as well. I, I mean, I was watching the SKT versus KT match. I saw Tarek banned out away. It was a target ban away from his supports. I mean... It's a support that most people haven't picked up yet, but definitely has some potential. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we have seen a few Terex in professional play uh, so far. Not a ton, but the few times that they have been picked up, they have been decently strong. Not all of them. It's not an automatic win, like somebody say Rise getting through or something like that, but it is very strong. Uh, we do have the duo lane locked in for Hazen here and it will be ash brahm so a very cc heavy lane a very initiation heavy lane they want to be the ones that are making the calls for the rest of the team to go in similar yeah to we're just we're just talking about this ash yeah. picking up a little bit of presence in the meta right now so we're going to be seeing it going down in that bottom lane with the brahm here as you're saying, cover over the victor, but Ash, Brom versus Sivir, and Tarek in this bottom lane. Yeah, will be very interesting. Mid lane will be the last pick for Johnson Heights here. They're hovering the victor. Like I said, it was kind of a trinity of mid laners with Rise, Azir, and Victor last patch. That doesn't seem like it'll be changing with the Rise off the table. Azir and Victor will be the lock in. So I feel like this lane kind of favors Victor early on. Victor has a much easier time of pushing in. It costs him quite a bit of mana, and but he can do it in really one, just one spell once he gets that upgraded laser. Uh, his damage over time in a fight is very good, and it punishes immobile champions. Azir, while he does have a dash, it's kind of difficult to get out of a bad situation with it a lot of time, and it can cost you a lot of DPS if you have to use it defensively as well. So being able to punish this Ash, deal with her a little bit with this Victor is a really smart choice. Overall, the mobility is somewhat low, but the Sivir helps out everyone in this comp for Johnson Heights. Yeah, this is going to be... I mean, this mid lane matchup, I think, is actually pretty important to highlight. It's Cloudwater, the most the highest strength player in this match. He's challenger around 500 LP, as I was saying before, mm -hmm. versus a sweet genius who most people won't know, but he uh, used to be challenger player known as Doppler, played for the team Cognitive Gaming. Um, although he may not be quite up to practice, I mean his recent performances in HSL matches haven't been too great. But he was one of the like the strongest players like for for Hazen High School before. We're gonna see how that matchup plays out, guys. It is Hazen High School versus Johnston Heights Secondary School in the round of eight of our uh, spring playoffs here. So we're gonna be taking a quick break before we got into the match, and we'll be right back with game number one.
Alright guys, welcome back. It's game number one of Hazen High School versus Johnston Heights Secondary School in the High School Star League League of Legends Spring Playoffs. Round of eight, and Crusader get in here with Blaster Boy bringing you this match and the uh, top laner for Hazen with the great name that just makes the spectator overlay look dumb. Yeah, very easy to cast as well, you know, it just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or does it say Q1? All right, works for Is that me. a one or it? I think a it's a one. one. It looks like a one. Let's just go with Q1. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Hayes in high school coming fresh off of the uh, winter championships win where they took the 3-2 uh, victory over Temple City High School. So a team that definitely wants to make it into this next round here. Um, I mean, ha having that recent success. Yeah, definitely. They want to definitely try to carry the momentum from a previous win, even if it was a separate tournament, more or less. It's still quite a few of the same competitors, like you it's said. Been a while. It's been a while. City. It has been a little while, though. It's you been want... a whole semester schooling. Yeah, yeah, that is true. It is quite a long time when it does come down to it. But nonetheless, carrying the momentum from mm -hmm. being the number one in the league is always something you want to do. Uh, as much as possible, and I mean, the best in the world can do it. Why can't Hazen do? <laughs> yeah, See if so. they can pull an SKT and take two titles back to back. Yep, opposite side starts here for uh, the uh, junglers. So we're gonna be seeing the bottom lane of Hazen High School getting the uh, the Gromp or the Krugs advantage here. And it does kind of make sense to see only secret starting on the the uh, top side because that allows one your bottom lane to get the early camp which is something that johnson heights did not have the luxury of getting so now you see that this ash is already level two as compared to uh, level ones across the board otherwise so that can that can give quite a bit of an advantage but also cc down in this bottom lane is extremely heavy with the ash brom lane like i mentioned before so uh, being looking to gank that lane will be very very easy. There will be a lot of follow up if you can find a good opening. Yep, and uh, I mean, only secrets will definitely need a lot of CC to help them out with the ganks because Gray's heavily damaged jungler here. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a bit of training coming out already in this bottom lane. So, do we have slight CS lead here for Ak Akinorogia? As well as in this top lane, Q1 takes the image of a Toxic Walk as he's pushing up that lane. Yeah, so while we're at a bit of a standstill here, I'll take this time to uh, talk about the Yazir change that I mentioned before. So, the, the really big, big change is, well, overall the nerfs were focused around what, what he does secondarily. So, one of the things was his wall duration was nerfed, so his ult doesn't last nearly as long anymore. It's two seconds short at the lowest rank and four seconds short at the highest, so has a set, a, a flat duration of three seconds now. That's not really that big of a deal because you mostly just use it for the first initiation or the initial peel. Uh, but then the second nerf is he can no longer cast his soldiers on turrets, so he can no longer just tear through turrets, melt turrets, and have that huge, huge pushing power that he brought to the table before. He still pushes minions just as quickly, and he still does the same amount of damage that he always did but his turret taking potential is severely lowered and so it'll take him a very long time even if cloudwater gets consistently pushed out of lane and he has a lot of time on that turret it'll take him ages to melt down that turret on his own so that can be a pretty big hit to azir's uh dominance in the mid lane in one way so i'm gonna be having just quite early game here as he seems to look for some way to get an advantage and so far it's just the CS differentials coming up but not going to mean too much in the long run. Thinking about as you were saying before, he's in high school just recently picking up this uh, winter championship board, winter championship title here. I don't think... Yeah, we haven't had a team pick up the, uh, the two-time champion title, the winter and then the uh, grand final champion. Since uh, Cerritos, since our first season where Cerritos High School picked that up. That being said, this is only our third season, so I can't really say too much. Then, it's you know, it's been two years since that's happened. <laughs> not too, uh, not too big of a time gap when you really yeah. think about it. But definitely goes to show. I mean, we were 
Do you fun to see another dominant team there? Cerritos, though, I mean, they picked up 3-0 wins, like, all the time. 2-0, 3-0 wins all the time. This team, not as dominant, I don't think. Um, yeah. Obviously, compared to those guys there. Those guys are just insane. They were just on a whole other level than all the other teams back then. But I think it's just the um, skill gap has definitely decreased. Yeah, definitely. Bottom lane, maybe seeing this gank coming down. Stun onto the Ash. Kindred coming in from the side. So Siskyo will be looking for a gank. IMK looking to tank up some damage as he puts up that shield. We'll be taking some shield is forced out. That'll be the end of that. Yeah, good good start for the gank, honestly. Burning the heal from uh from this ash right now. Will put them at in an okay position. Burning a summoner for a gank like that is usually alright, but I mean heal is on a shorter cooldown than flash usually is, and that's really when you start to consider a summoner for a gank worth it. Uh, something to touch on with this Kindred, by the way, is that she did have some changes as well. Uh, how her marks, well, the camps that she can mark are different. She can now, uh, for three marks, sort of in the middle, I believe it's marks five to seven, she will mark red and blue buffs occasionally now. Um, she can ma ma uh, mark all of the el um, all the elemental dragons and the Rift Herald, and then also the Elder Dragon and Baron. She marks more frequently. But her Q damage was lowered, and she needs nine damage. She needs nine marks before her Q will break even. Oh, Holy secrets Ethis. coming in. Ethis is going to be exhausted up here. They're going under the tower. First blood over for Hazen High School, and now they're looking to make a quick escape. But Cloudwater is coming in. He finds one. Chaos Storm gets dropped. Akunarogia is already down, and they're trying to split up the fight. Your only secret's getting chased after. Toxay walk with a teleport down, picks up one. Cloudwater flashes over, takes down IMK. Now Q1, he came down with the teleport, but he will have to run away, because that was three members down for Hazen. Yeah, and that'll likely be a dragon here as well. Infernal Drake, absolutely huge for Johnston. Uh, if they are able to pick this up successfully, I think that they will. No, they won't even go for it, actually. So, three kills, but nothing else. The gold, the gold is still dead even in spite of those three kills. That is a good start from uh, for Cloudwater in this mid lane, getting two of those for himself. A little bit of a mistake did delay the one kill onto IMK at the very end, but he did still pick it up nonetheless, and that was really, really good from Johnston Heights, and a fantastic start for the team overall. Yeah, very quick response there to that gank, and just Cloudwater able to just get down on those low memories of yeah. he's in high school here. And he's the large rod as he returns to the lane. We have you know quite a bit of a damage boost with that. Yeah, and if, if I'm remembering correctly, that's also upgraded hex core as well. So that is a lot of money to be spending this early on in the game, especially. And that's a huge, huge damage boost for him. If I click onto him... Yeah, he does have upgraded Death Ray already. So, huge boost for the victor. That that on its own is an optimal back, but the Needless League Large Rod is really just icing, and that will <laughs> really put him ahead of his opponent. Toxie Walk also recently picking up a kill and an assist from that bottom lane fight. He's back into the lane with the team that here. And yeah. I mean, they didn't really suffer too much from like CS differentials or anything. Toxic Walk actually did go teleport down to the bottom lane as well. Sweet Genius remained in this middle lane, and now we're gonna be seeing another it's a bit more presence in the bottom lane. Siskyo was looking for a Siskyo was looking for a gank, but it's caught up by War, which she takes out pretty quickly. Yeah, with only secrets showing down there as well. Oh man, Toxic Walk. Going in pretty deep here, doing quite a lot of damage to Q1 though, taking him pretty low. He is down in CS, but that kill and assist more than make up for the difference. So he will be in a very good spot, and if he can continue these very good teleports, these valuable teleports, even if it doesn't do a huge amount for his team overall, as long as he is being efficient with them, this 1v1 will be tilted in his favor automatically anyway. So after, even in that bottom lane fight, Siskyo, oh, he wasn't present, so yeah, I didn't pick up anything there. Only secrets that got one kill, and now looking for an invade here, although the red buff did just get taken down. He's going to run right into Siskyo, they're looking for a duel. Will there be one? Meanwhile, bottom lane, Akunarogia is going to get exhausted after the stuns, but Atlas is taking a lot of damage. 
gonna be invulnerable because of the Taric ultimate, but is still going down low. Has to flash away. Meanwhile, back up Ooh. to the jungle. Cisco goes down. Bottom lane, we saw double stun there to stop up that fight, but back up to top lane so far. We just saw Cisco going down. And now only secrets is low, but looking to trade back on the cloud water. Oh. Runs the stun, still get the kill. Toxic Walk gets the revenge. And now Q1 is forced to dash his way out of that one. Only secrets with the raid boss play has just turned around onto Siskio, took him down, and then did the same to Cloudwater. In spite of all of the threats around him, he still ended up getting out, taking up two kills for himself in that invade. Hugely valuable for him there. And that's a really, really good victory for Hazen overall because they also push out the bottom lane. Even though they didn't get any kills, they turned that into a turret with the help of Sweet Genius. And that will mean a lot of global gold in the favor of Hazen all of a sudden. Nearly 2,000 gold out of nowhere. Yeah, at this and Bosky being forced to back out of there. And that means that they can just push on that tower because Sweet Genius moved down there. Once again, didn't opt to go, you know, straight up. Or didn't opt to follow Cloudwater here, but they go to the other part of the map to get a different advantage for his team here. So Hazen picking up a... Slight early game advantage here because of that tower take. We'll see if they can convert it. Yeah, there is quite a bit of damage going on to this top tower right now, but Tox Toxay Walk will not be getting us anytime soon because here comes here comes Ak and IMK, and they're going to be able to hold this top lane. And they're actually their goal here is because they took the bottom turret, they want to take the top turret as well. So this is something typical you'll see. With lane spots where you'll see the opposite, you'll see a duo lane go top, they'll take the turret, and then they'll switch down bottom. This is the same idea, more or less. Oh, yeah, stun. Stun down, Toxe Walk here. May not be able to get too much more. Meanwhile, only secret down bottom lane. Ethos is in trouble. Q1 coming in here. But Siskyo has also joined the fight. Bosky doing what he can. They get the stun down onto Q1, but they're looking to kite away here. And that's because Cloudwater is coming in. Siskyo still looking to get one kill out of this one. Onto Only Secrets gets it. He does get taken down by Only Secrets. Now Sweet Genius trying to join this fight, but has uh -oh. very little mana. Bosky looking to re-engage. Has to flash away. And because Toxic Walk is coming down in this bottom side with a teleport. And Cloudwater will be able to join the fight. Gets the kill on the sweet genius. Q1 has to get out. But a little bit overzealous there from sweet genius in the end. And only secrets a little bit as well. Overall, I mean, that was... They did get one kill on the side of Hazen. And they got the top turret as well. So I feel like that was still valuable for them. They only maintain their gold lead though. They don't grow it whatsoever. Yeah, once again, picking up a turret. Although their gold lead could get closed down. Because Toxie, Walk and Cloudwater are taking out this bottom lane tower. Yeah, Trundle is very good at pushing turrets because of his Q auto reset Victor. Not so much, but he will be able to deal with these waves and the Self. turret will fall. So that's gonna be first tower of the game for Johnston height secondary. And they close up that Goldie by a nice amount and now starting up on this dragon. And looks like he's in high school. They're gonna see it's going down a little bit too late though. It's already in the hands of Johnson Heights, and that's going to be the Fernal Drink going over to them. Yeah, four stacks onto Siskio right now, so he's getting very close oh. to that. Ooh. Toxie Walk about to back to size not to, and engages on the Q1, does some nice damage, taking him down to half health and barely taking any damage himself. He's actually regening it back quite nicely here. Skill looking to go down bottom potentially right now, but like I said, he has four mark of the kindred stacks. So uh, what they did was they lowered kindred's base damage on her Q, but they made it so that whenever she gets a stack, she gains five bonus damage on her Q. So she needs nine to break even with how, uh, with where it used to be, and after that, the damage is just going up from there. Getting to that stack point though is usually pretty difficult. Four stacks at 14, 15 minutes is actually pretty good. He and Again, you can mark champions a little bit more frequently, so being able to swap that around more in the later game will allow him to continue stacking that pretty quickly. And that is also, remember, still holds all the benefits as before. It still gives you all the bonus damage to champions and all other targets, so he will be melting targets as this game goes on and as these stacks keep climbing. So 
so we do have Johnson Heights with the kill lead, but he's in with the gold advantage here. We're seeing some grouping up in this middle, middle lane, and it looks like that will continue as there's a, you know, a few people in the side lanes here, but most of the team centered on the uh, middle of this map here, but won't be seeing too much come out of it, just a lot more farming coming out from these two teams. Yeah, I, I like the proactive warding that Johnston has r down right now, though. You can see Hazen, they have a lot of wards on the bottom side of the map and immediately around the mid lane. And that does make sense, but it makes sense about a minute or two ago when the dragon was still up. Johnston Heights knows that the only objective on the map for the next few minutes is going to be the Rift Herald, and that is a threat. The 20 minute buff is pretty dangerous to hand over for free. The warding over there is leaning that more in their favor. It'll make it safer for them to pick it up if they want to, and it'll also let them see if Hazen is picking it up, of course. So, they're just paying attention to the current state of the map, and they're moving their wards accordingly. It's a very good start for them. They're also pushing in uh, with wards aggressively on the top side as well. As this top turret falls. I'm Takse Walk, continuing to shove up that wave, and not too much that Akinorogia can do about it. Meanwhile, Cloudwater Fox, Bosky. In this middle lane, just doing some poke, although it's a Terra and a Victor. He was talking about before. Those yeah. guys don't really do. Those guys don't really do too much of that tire there, but still maintaining some pressure here. And then we do see Johnson Heights creeping up forward in this map. Yeah, I mean, oh, Cisco. Oh, Cisco. He gets caught out wow. and completely destroyed. Only secrets picks up that kill with a nice arrow. Yeah, very, very nice pick up there. Just solid play with that ash arrow and immediate advantage uh, taken from only secrets so much damage this is why graves is considered a counter to kindred because as soon as he gets up into very close range of kindred that is when he's doing maximum damage and kindred being somewhat short range and somewhat lacking in the mobility a little bit i mean she does have her dance of arrows but it's similar to a vein tumble in nice range self, only secrets taking a lot of damage, damage. yeah so it is a few members of this team here, but Q1 is off to the side, and he has a nice full health bar. Maybe be looking for an engage here as Hubwater and Fosky are getting uh, poked down here, but more members are going to be joining up here. Enchanted Crystal Arrow is down, otherwise everything else is still up. Oh. And there's the Terra Cosmic Radiance is popping only after two members, but they're still looking for this engage. Only Secret does get stunned up, Hubwater finds a kill. And Q1 is trying to dive into this back line, but now he has to run for the Whoa. hills. Cloudwater was in there. He picked up a double kill, does go down, gets shut down by only secrets. But it's Hazen High School still forced to back away here under their tower as many members of them are low. The remaining members of them are low. Lots of ults used there for Johnson Heights, but they really did make it work. Teleport coming in from Q1. Ooh, That's not instant good. Instant stun onto him. And he is going to be able to get out. He ulted back to the fountain. <laughs> oh my. Whoa! Whoa! Double kill only secrets out of nowhere. Wow, just Whoa. dropping all the damage at once. Siskio had no time to react with the Lamb's Rest with there. Very nice play from only secrets to salvage that as best he could, honestly. But it's still not going to be enough. Johnson Heights... Actually, the gold lead doesn't grow for Johnson Heights at all. They Again, they only maintain what they had before, and now this mid turret will fall. Hazen's going to be in the lead again. Hazen and I still picking up that middle lane tower. Kills are evened up there, yeah. Johnson Heights Earth not going to too much out of that. Yep, Mountain Drake spawning up next. 25 seconds. Yep, first dragon was the infernal dragon that went over to Johnston Heights secondary. So, he's in high school. Eight and three on only secrets here. Definitely the yeah. standout player right now. Yeah, absolutely. All the kills. Mm hmm. <laughs> That's 100% yeah. of the kills where he's in high school. Ah. And I mean, Cloudwater is in a similar position. He doesn't have quite 100%, but I mean, five out of eight of them still very high. Oh, Cloudwater might be a little bit caught here. They're gonna be looking to get the stun procs down, but Chaos Storm gets dropped, and so does oh, the grab. Man. He's gonna look at the damage he just puts down. 
Hayes and High School find themselves in a world of trouble. Q1 with the Chronoberg trying to run away. Sweet Genius is going to be on the retreat as well. Three members already down. And Q1 is in a lot of trouble here, although he is going to be speedy enough to get himself out. This Victor is just so scary right now, already having the Rylize completed in addition to that fully leveled up Hex Core. Absolutely huge damage coming out from him right now. And there's, with the Rylize first build, it's actually really, really smart because, like I said in Champ Select, when they picked up the Victor, one thing that Victor does really, really well now is punishing immobile champions. And that is exactly what's been happening to this Ash in every single fight. The last few fights. She's just been caught in Chaos Storm. That's what we saw when Cloudwater Roam bottom after that dive and cleaned up those kills. Chaos Storm right on top of Ash, no escape. We saw it in the last fight where he took two or three members down on his own in mid and then just there as well. There is nothing that you can do about this Chaos Storm without a flash. It is so, so scary. And this is the real power of Victor. This is what Riot wanted to do with him. They wanted to give him damage over time. And his ult is super scary now. Highest ranked player for uh, yeah. Johnson Heights here. Highest ranked in the game, probably one of the highest ranked in HSL. Just being in that challenger rank, I mean, it already puts you way above pretty much everyone else in League of Legends. So, yeah. 5 and 3 here. I'm definitely showing very good. Um, he's just showing up good here. Yeah. I mean, they're fighting in the, that narrow position, and it's pretty easy to put down the gravity field and mm -hmm. chaos storm that is just going to hit a lot of people. And be so effective there. Yeah, and that now was a little. See... Oh, he's in high school, potentially looking for the engage. Only secrets. How do you get bursted down there from that death ray from Cloudwater? And he's in high school. Just has to be so careful where they step. Yeah, definitely. They they really need to watch out where they're going. I mean, in the last fight, to be fair, Hazen did make quite a bit of a mistake by only with only secrets, uh, in particular, dashing over the gravity field. He ended up getting stunned by it on the very edge on the opposite side of where he started. He tried to get off of it in time, but he just didn't have the movement speed in order to do it. And taking a risk like that is kind is really kind of silly, and he just got completely exploded by the death ray into Chaos Storm immediately. And that was a big, big hit to Hazen right off the bat. He still has all the kills. Now he's caught. Only secrets taking a lot of damage, and they force out the glacial fissure. So chasing after Cisco gets in there, gets the shut down. Taric Cosmic Radiance is going to be coming out there, and actually will be. Tanking damage under this tower as they continue this fight. Chain and Crystalero from the side here. And Cloudwon is going low. He's actually in a pretty difficult position here as they still continue the fight there. And members are going low. Ethos went down. Three members of Hazen down once again. It's only IMK and Sweet Genius alive, but it was a difficult position for Johnson Heights to die there as they were between two towers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fact that they were able to make that work three for one in their favor while in between two turrets is incredible they they're really spacing their ults really smartly they knew they were going for the dive foskey knew that they were going for the dive right off the bat so he throws down the cosmic radiance before they get to the turrets as they're running to the turrets with the silver ult he throws that down so they all get the invincibility he has a 2.5 second channel time being yeah. able to pre-use that and use it effectively is massive and that can make the difference in a fight plus the lamb's respite to keep them all alive as well there was no way that anyone from hazen was allowed to stand on that so it didn't really matter when siskio used it as long as he used it to save his own team huge huge fight there from johnson heights but they still don't have that huge of a gold lead it's almost 2000 gold now and this is the situation that hazen was in before but the problem for Hazen was that it just never grew. Johnson Heights needs to be able to change that. So, we are seeing slight goalie here for Johnson Heights and Hazen on their back feet. It's still only three towers taken by both of these teams here. Johnson Heights, I mean, they've been finding some of the kills here and not quite the objectives just yet. They do have the two dragons on their side, but I mean, you can imagine these towers are going to be falling soon here as. 
once again, they're looking to apply pressure on this middle lane. Yeah, and taking, have... oh, taking a look at the next dragon, uh, minute 15, it is another Infernal Drake. So if Johnson Heights picks this up, that'll be a big stat boost. 16% bonus AD and AP will be really, really big for them and just help, it excel help him accelerate this even further. Lots of damage on to Ak. Yeah, just trading in this middle lane here. Meanwhile, Toxic Walk is pushing down in this bottom lane, keeping Q1 occupied. Both of these guys do have teleport. And Q1 is actually going to be looking for an engage because he's having a few of his members come down to this bottom lane. But looks like Johnson Heights are responding in kind here. So a lot of grouping down the bottom lane. Really, really smart from Johnson Heights here. If you can, in that situation, just leave your top laner for dead, basically. Oh, Q1 oh. getting a little bit too close here, but Cisco is going to be taking some damage here. Comes the Cosmic Radiance. Look at the invert abilities, but look at the stuns. The Glacial Fisher as well. And everyone's going to be grouped up here. Chaos Storm finally gets dropped down here. It's going to be ticking down on the members. Cloud Water won't be able to find any kills. No one has any kills just yet. And everyone is so, so low here. But no kills. Still no kills yet. Wow. The tanks being in the front lines there and just playing around their cooldowns properly is really just keeping everyone alive here. It was a little bit of overlap from the Cosmic Radiance and the, Lam and the Lamb's Respite in that fight, but it just didn't really matter all that much. At that point, the Lamb's Respite was mostly just for healing, which was perfectly fine. But now Hazen, they get the Infernal Drake. Now they equalize in the, in the team stat department. There's still a Dragon lead for Johnson Heights, but it's only an Earth Dragon. That's not going to be helping them in fights anytime soon. 2-1. Went back. Used the teleport to get back into that, just in case another fight broke out. They decided to go for that Dragon, so... Pick up their first of the game here. And that was a very close fight between those two teams. Yeah, absolutely. It looked like there was a lot of really good damage being thrown down in the middle of everyone we saw the collateral damage fly across a lot of the no one on johnson heights Johnson's dies heights. yeah no one died because it hit everyone while they were in the cosmic radiance still it didn't do any damage it was fantastic positioning but the timing was just a little bit off and that really hurt hazen's potential in that fight Man, all of the money being thrown onto only secrets is still really, really odd, I would say. Um, oh, Siskyo maybe finding Q1 here. We'll not be able to find the engage, though. But yeah, with all the money on this Graves, he really, really needs to be able to do work. But the problem is he has to go so close. He needs to be finding 1v1s, but Johnson Heights is never not grouped. They're all, they all basically have big AoE ultimates where they need to clump up. And that's what they're doing. Only Secrets needs to be hitting the tanks and taking them down one at a time and then moving on to the rest of the team as quickly as possible. But I just don't think that a Graves is able to really do that. They need the Sazir and Ash to get rolling. The one thing that Hazen have going for them is that this Graves can get them through this odd early and mid-game period with all of these stats that he has. And then, later on, that's when Ash and Azir really become monsters, regardless of whether they have any kills or not, because they will be farmed. They will have the items that they need. And from then on, everyone in this Hazen comp will be doing a lot of work. But they just really have to get there. And honestly, with how close that fight was, with nobody dying, holding on the bleeding is very, very good for Hazen. Toxic walk a little bit caught. Uh, completely caught here. Only secrets in Q1 and getting it onto him. He's gonna be popping the ultimate here. Trying to take some damage, trying to heal some backup. Meanwhile, Cisco is gonna oh. be going down on the side. Lambs just by gonna be coming out there. And that is gonna be a great tree of a shuffle, but Sweet Genius may still go down just yet. There it is, a Chaos Storm comes in and Cloud Water picks up a double kill as he enters the fight. Only secrets force him back away. Cloud Water over the wall. Wow. Chasing after triple kill for him. And two members left alive for Hazen. Huge, huge fight from Cloudwater. Cisco stalled perfectly there, right when he needed to with the Lamb's Respite. Now that'll be the Baron. This is the combination of the Earth Dragon, the very high DPS from three damage members here, and the Kindred just being very well stacked overall. 
huge turn for Johnston Heights. It looked really bad, but then they only lose one. And they get three in return, plus the Baron. This is all going in their favor. Hazen's not looking too hot in this game. All things considered, though, it is still only a 4,000, well, 5,000 gold lead nearly for Johnston Heights. That is quite a lot, but at 30 minutes, it doesn't mean... That doesn't mean as much as it would have a few minutes ago, and this can still be turned around with just one or two good fights from Hazen. We're missing another five breakouts here in this bottom lane. As the Baron buffed up minions are going to be pushing in here. Tower is falling. IMK's Loa has to back away. It's going to be the inner tower falling there for Hazen High School, Johnson Heights. Looking to apply this pressure. Toxie Walk is up in that top lane. The rest of the members are going to be switching over to this middle lane here. And looks like they're going to be getting quite a bit of value off this Baron buff here. Yeah, Johnson Heights really just want to push around. Just want to push in the lanes right now and get as many turrets as possible. Because they don't have Cosmic Radiance or lands rested up for a few more seconds. After those come up, then they will 100% be willing to go for any fights. Because they have... They don't really even almost need a lot of their other ults. Those two ults on their own can be fight deciding. And with how Johnson Heights has been using them so far, it may just be again. Dives are super, super easy and safe with these two champions. Setting up a siege. Johnson Heights here. I mean, moving between middle and bottom lane, looking for pickoffs, looking to just push up these lanes. Maybe finding one, only secrets will be taking some damage here. Gotta be careful of that. Cisco just comes in, deals the damage, and now Johnson Heights moving up to this top lane here. We're gonna be seeing Foskey coming in uh -oh. from behind, but he may be in a lot of trouble, has to pop the ultimate just for himself here. We'll get that invulnerability, and we'll be taking up some damage here. But he will be going down only secrets with that kill, and now he's on the side trying to do something. But Cloudwater is going to be coming in. He's already found one. Akunarovia is so low, and is going to fall. Double kill Cloudwater once again, and he continues to go in. Jonathan's Outlast gets popped, and everyone's going low. Q1 with the Chrono Break back. Sweet Genius going down. Cisco over the wall. He's looking for the kills here. Three members down once again for Hazen. Johnson Heights pushing in. Even with a misstep, Johnson Heights, they're able to pull it together and still win that fight by one kill. Maintaining the Baron buff on three members is very, very important. And they will be able to get out safely. Oh, Athos might be a little bit caught here. All alone. We'll be able to get out though. I'm just gonna be picking up that farm there. So now 11 and three on the cloud water. Only secrets. 12 and 6. I mean, not much has changed in the kill spread. Yeah. There's one kill over to Akunarogia. And they're going to be seeing another Mountain Drake going down. Also, now 20% bonus damage to uh, turrets and epic monsters. So the next dragon will be the Elder, 100% now because of the timing. So, 6 short minutes. About 39.20 or so, we will be seeing Elder Drake enter the rift. And the Baron will be spawning probably around a pretty similar time with this buff still running. Three and a half minutes on it. Oh, but it does just wear off. So, yeah, we have about three and a half minutes until the Baron spawns. So, that'll be closer to 37. Still not far off, though. So once again, Toxie Walk pushing in this bottom lane. He's built up such a big advantage here. To see a spot push so freely, and now Foxy oh, no. looking for the stun. Only secrets gets caught in it. The fight will begin here. Cloud Water trying to get it on the side. Arrow is going to be going past right. Everybody oh, and Cloud Water finds the kill as Akunarogia was looking to get a duel down. Won't be able to, but that's actually all for the kills here. Toxie Walk, that was actually a 4v5 because Toxie Walk is pushing in this bottom lane here. And now Johnson Heights will continue to apply pressure to all these towers here. Sweet Genius doing what he can, but he's falling low. Cisco looking for the kill, but he does go down as Q1 rejoins the fight. 
Foxy walks, still pushing bottom lane. Only secrets is going to be coming in there, trying to do the damage that he can. Inhibitor Tower is going to be going down. Foxy walk though, he's going to fall himself here. Only secrets once again picks up the kill. Keeping the trend alive. Actually, no Q1 picked up a kill, so now two kills off of having all of them. Kind of unfortunate for only secrets. Not going to have all quite all the kills this game, but. I mean, I feel like this is better for Hazen overall, though. Getting a little bit more gold spread is going to be very valuable. Even just one or two kills on some of these other members can just help accelerate them a little bit more. And honestly, these fights, that fight in particular, was really, really close. It was only a uh, two for... It was actually a two for one, I believe, in the favor of Hazen in that situation. And there were so many members that were all close to death. Siskio would have gotten out similarly to the rest of them, I feel, had he not gone for that tower dive. So, these are very, very close. They just really need this Azir to get to this... Well, now he's at three items, so he's getting to that point where he's really, really scary all of a sudden. With Baron up in 40 seconds and no vision control for Hazen right now... They desperately need to get wards in here if they want to have a shot at this game because this has to be their fight. It'll be really, really hard, but this has to be their fight, I feel. If if Johnson Heights get this, I don't think that Hazen will be able to pull this game back without some kind of miracle. This game is just one fight away from Johnson Heights being able to push in for a victory here. 7,000 gold in the lead, five towers up. They have one inhibitor down, one inhibitor exposed. One inhibitor tower is just left up here. Aaron's about to spawn, as you're saying, and this is very crucial for Hazen High School. And right now, they have to deal with Toxic Walk, who's just split pushing that bottom lane down, as well as Super Minions pushing in this top lane. And lots of control here by Johnson Heights as they put down the voids all over the place. So now, Toxic Walk continues to push for this inhibitor tower, and looks like he may pick it up here. Because I don't think Q1 can do too much in terms of the damage. They can dish yeah, out, and really. Baron has been started. There's a sun going down, and this fight is going to start, but meanwhile, Baron going down, and it's taken by Johnson Heights with little resistance, and Toxie Walk is just going for this inhibitor. Oh. <laughs> just, just not taking any damage from Q1 here, and now he's going to be looking to join the fight inside of the base, and Chen and Chris Arrow is going to land on him. They're going to be trying to put down damage, but look at how tanky he is. Taking four members right now. Now it's five. His only secret puts down the auto attacks. They finally take him down. But middle inhibitor tower does go down. And now they want to go for the fight, Ooh. though. It's a 4v5 in favor. Johnson Heights Chaos Storm gonna be coming down. There's a storm coming, and it's Cloudwater bringing it down. That's one kill for him. That's a one for Ethos. The shutdown coming in a double kill. Cisco jumping forward, and this is gonna be it. Five members of Hazen, five members of Hazen about to fall. There is a forfeit out there. Johnson Heights puts the nail in the coffin for game number one. Fantastic performance from Johnson Heights. Cloudwater in particular really, really delivered that game. On his own, he secured half of the team's kills. And yeah, fantastic performance really good draft i think from johnson heights i really like their composition overall they not only doubled down on the invincibility but they also had a somewhat immobile comp they fixed they patched that up with the sivir and then the victor i feel was just a perfect counter to this ash which if you can have one carry negate the other and then have somebody and then deliver like cloudwater did still that's just a huge, huge deal for Johnson Heights. They had such a lead. They kept it fairly even, even when they were behind, and they just accelerated the whole game so quickly. That is going to be game number one. Johnson Heights picking up the win in a 38-minute game. And we're going to be seeing what happens in game number two. Hazen High School going to be looking to find a win in this series. It's the best of three in the round of eight of our spring playoffs here at the High School Star League. Guys, you're going to be right back with game number two. Don't go anywhere.